Okay, so, I was on an atheist chat show the other night with uh, Shannon Q, Miss Shannon Q, atheist extraordinaire. And, uh, you know, we were having a nice conversation, but I said something to her in the course of the conversation. And uh, I believe this was on Monday night. Uh, I'll have a link down low. I come in about 38 minutes in. So, you know, skip through the first part. It's boring. I'm not there. But then it gets really good because I show up. So you like that. Um, so I'm having a conversation with her, and I throw her. She, she gets totally thrown by something I say. I say, Christianity is not the most plausible of the major world religions. And she does a double take. She's like, oh, wait, what? Well, what did you say? And so, yeah, and I, I was going somewhere where with the concept. I wasn't just, yeah, I wasn't just like, you know, giving up the fight. And going, okay, you win. Christianity is not believable. You know, let's, let's pack it up. Um, I was going somewhere. And what I was trying to say is that, in fact, it isn't designed to be the most plausible of the major world religions. Christianity, right from the jump, is asking you to believe in the miraculous against sense and reason to some degree or another. Now, there's a famous atheist uh, phrase that gets trotted out often by the weaker atheist apologists who say, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. Now, when you were talking about Christianity in particular, that claim, that phrase makes sense. Okay, the claim that Jesus was exactly who he said he was, God in the flesh, that's an extraordinary claim and that's going to require some extraordinary proof to you, the individual, or at least some powerful evidence to you, the individual. But there is a different thing when we're talking about does in fact, just a blanket statement generally, God exists. That ain't all that extraordinary of a claim, actually. It's a fairly ordinary claim. God exists. Most people actually believe it. Almost every society in the, in the history of the world has believed it to one degree or another and ordered their society as such. So the idea that God exists isn't all that extraordinary of a claim. The idea that Jesus Christ himself was that God, that's starting to get extraordinary. So that will require some form of I wouldn't say extraordinary proof, but divine proof. So let's separate this into two questions. And they're different questions. Prior to me becoming a Christian, I was fairly intellectually convinced that God exists. And that was through reading. That wasn't through any supernatural, any experience with God. That was just through reading of certain types of books. Uh, in my 20s, I started with atheist books. And I had no dog in the fight, I promise you that. I was Mr. like, you know, Mr. I was in a, I was in a punk band. I was like, thought I was cool, uh, reading Nietzsche. If, if, and I was all ready to believe atheism if I, in fact, had been, been convinced. And I started going deep into the, you know, the eggheady atheists. Reading Camus, Nietzsche, uh, Sartre a little bit. Sartre's a little boring. Sartre's a little boring, gotta be honest. Um... I tried. <laughs> I tried being in nothingness. I didn't get very far. Um, nausea's good. I, I did get through Nausea. Nausea's good. Stranger is a great book, by the way. I highly recommend it. Oh, read it. You'll love it. Anyways, point being, okay, so there was an intellectual question. Does God exist? Now, that question can be answered intellectually. If you're going to do an honest intellectual search... I would recommend the, some of the books that I, I looked into. William James, The Varieties of Religious Experience. These aren't necessarily Christian texts. Joseph Campbell, The Power of Myth. Uh, Read Everything by Young. These aren't necessarily Christian texts, but they started to, to plant seeds inside of me where I became intellectually convinced that there was a God that is entirely different from supernaturally convicted by said God. It's a different thing altogether. Um, another, another thing to check out is the Tao Te Ching and the Bhagavad Gita. I read both of those. Now, I maintain, and I've said this before and I will say this again, I actually became a Christian in a totally different way than intellectually, through a totally different avenue. I believe 100%. I went to church one night. Again, no dog in the fight. I cannot stress that enough. You need to start from a point of view of maybe... You need to start from the point of view of, I just want to know the truth. I don't 
care if the truth is God is real or the truth is there is no God. I just want to know what's true. That's where I started from. Like I said, I started with atheism. So I'll go to church one night and I believe 150% the Holy Spirit of God himself revealed to my heart that Jesus was exactly who he said he was. Now that was a supernatural occurrence. Not necessarily an extraordinary occurrence because it's something that people claim happens to them every single solitary day of the week. So to call it extraordinary is a little bit much. But it was a supernatural occurrence. If you want to know that God is real like that, you need to put yourself in a position where you can have that supernatural occurrence. Outside of that, you can search some of the texts that I searched through, honestly, with no dog in the fight. And you can come to a perfectly reasoned intellectual conclusion that is far more likely that God exists than not, just from the point of view of reason and sense. But that's a completely separate thing from having the Holy Spirit speak directly to your heart. So, just trying to clarify that. And that is what I meant by Christianity is not the most plausible of the major world religions. It's not. It's asking you to believe right from the get-go in the miraculous, a virgin birth, resurrection, all of that. It's asking you to believe against sense and reason. But you can make a perfectly good intellectual study using sense and reason prior to that supernatural information. The Bible even says, nobody comes to, 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 nobody comes to the Lord except that the Father draw him. Nobody comes to the Lord except that the Father draw him. It's the Holy Spirit of God himself that bears witness to your heart that Jesus was who he said he was. Again, that is a supernatural occurrence. Now, the other thing I said, and everybody seemed to wrestle with this, nobody really seemed to get this, so I'll try this again. Maybe nobody's going to get this either. But I said if you were just thinking of it intellectually, about God, and you were coming up with a religion just based on sense and reason, I thought the most plausible religion would be some form of, like, Star Wars type thing. You know, there's some benevolent life force, and we're all connected to it when we love, and, you know, you got to be a loving person, and then you can... I, I thought, prior to me becoming a Christian, that's kind of what I was shooting for. <laughs> there's, a, there, there's some sort of, you know, Star Wars life force that we, we loving people are all connected to or something bad people want to kill it or something like that. But anyways, like I said, nobody really seemed to buy that. So you don't have to buy that. <laughs> if that's, if that's just, you know, that's just something that just occurred to me. So that's that. Anywho, that's all.